this video, you are going to learn how to hang your garage gym mirrors easily. Everyone, I'm really buzzed right now. I just finished filming part of one of the videos I'm making for you, and we have to wait for it to like dry overnight. Hint, hint, it has something that needs to dry. And I thought I'd hop in and show you guys something that doesn't require me not require me to be sober. And it's how to hang your garage gym mirrors easily. Step one, you're going to want to get your measuring tape, measure from floor to ceiling, how tall your walls are, and measure how long the distance is that you're going to be hanging up the walls, or the mirrors. Your walls are already hung, hopefully. Step number two is to figure out what mirrors you want. So I highly recommend the Glacier Bay ones from Home Depot. They are three, fi three foot by five foot, and that's the ones that we actually use. They are really thin, so keep that in mind. If your wall is not square, you'll want to get command strips to kind of help with avoiding warping. We still have to do that in our gym, but if you've seen our videos, they look pretty good. Otherwise, we still have to put the command strips back there. Step number three, figure out how many you're going to order. Then, figure out how far away from that wall you're going to be working out. The next couple steps, I'm actually going to work on my iPad and show you. You can do, do this on a piece of graph paper. Um, it's really helpful and this will make sure that when you're hanging up your mirrors, you get the height that you need from the distance, from wherever you're working out. And you'll see that it can be applied or it can work for multiple distances from the mirror. Okay, so we're going to continue on. You should already know your height of your wall you should know how many mirrors you want and what mirror you're using i chose to use a three by five i'm going to demonstrate how i figured out where my mirrors are going to be placed on my wall i'm going to take a line four five six seven eight nine ten and i'm treating each square as one foot by one foot and then i'm also going to draw another line being the floor doesn't have to be perfect and the reason I did a floor on both sides of the wall is because I want one side to be real and I want one side to be imaginary. Now I'm going to figure out where I will be standing. I'm going to be working out about five feet from the wall and I'm five, three. So five, two, five, three. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Five, and let's go right here. So this is me. This is low. Oops, that's low. Now I want to do the same thing on the imaginary axis because what I want to do is basically see fake low in the mirror. So I'm going to go negative, or I guess it's positive five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm five, three. So I'm going to go a little bit higher. This is fake low. But I'm not the only person working out in this gym. Nick is also working out. So I'm going to take green, and he's about six feet tall. So I'm going to include this here. And the reason I'm including both me and him is because I'm shorter than him, so I have to figure out the lowest point. But he's also taller than me, so we have to figure out the highest point. So this is Nick. And this is fake Nick on the right side. And his feet are going to be where mine are, approximately. Now we have to take the barbell into thought. I'm going to say the barbell is about a foot and a half above Nick's head. And I'm not going to care about where I see the barbell because I'm shorter than Nick. And as long as he can see the barbell, I can see the barbell. So this is the barbell. This is a fake barbell. Right, so I'm just gonna draw those. Now this is the cool part. I'm gonna take this in a thinner line. Wherever our head is, we can approximate that where our eyes are. And what we could do is we can draw where our eyes are looking in a mirror. And when we're looking in a mirror, we're looking at the wall in reality. When I look at myself, I expect to see myself directly across I expect to see my feet down here. Hopefully this straightens. Nope, doesn't. I think my pencil is dying. 
Somewhere down there. That's okay. And then Nick expects to see himself. Let's see this in a different color. Right here. He expects to see his feet down here. And he expects to see the barbell up here. It's not perfect, but it's okay. You can use a straight edge. It makes it easier. Now what I want to think about is how tall our mirror is. Our mirror is about five feet tall. So I'm going to take a line over here. It's about five feet long. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. And I'm going to take my lasso and I'm going to figure out where the mirror should go based on the intercepts of these lines on the wall. So I think that this right here looks the best fit. And based on my graph and what I chose as my scale, this is about two feet above the ground. So that means I'm going to hang my mirrors two feet above the ground in order for both Nick and I to see our feet and for both Nick and I to see the barbell when we're standing five feet apart from, or five feet from the wall. The cool thing is you can actually scale this and figure out what is going to be the breaking point for when you will no longer see the barbell and when you're no longer going to see your feet. You can say that you're standing further out and um, I'm just going to draw on top of this. Ignore this if this is confusing, you can just skip forward, I'll undo everything. But say I'm standing over here. And actually let's do, yeah, let's do me. And then let's do where the barbell is. And this is one, two, three, four from the original position. One, two, three, four from the original position. I'm gonna see me and the barbell for Nick. Those are the really important points here. This is where the eye is. That's where my eye is. And that's where the feet are. And again, the mirror is intersecting those points that were made. So I'll still be able to see myself, my barbell, and Nick will see Nick self and Nick's barbell without an issue if we're about nine feet away from the wall. And you can even do this scaled forward if you were to stand closer. Let me undo these. So say you were to stand right here. Um, let's do me. If you were to stand right here, the barbell were here, two feet away from the wall here and here. Your feet are down here. So I'd be able to see my feet and I'd be able to see Nick's barbell. And yeah, if I hang the mirrors two feet above the ground, I will be able to see both those up to, let's see how far. Let's see, I'm here. I wouldn't be able to see it further out. And that, I know that's a little confusing, but this will make it easier to figure out how tall your mirror should be or how high your mirror should be from the ground. I hope this is very helpful for you. If you did like it, go ahead and press the like button and press the bell so you're, you're notified of when another video I post is out because I think this will be really helpful for building your garage gym. I hope to see you guys soon in the next video. Hope you like this. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit that bell so you're notified of our next video. Again, thanks for watching. Peace.